Hello everybody, welcome to World Card Making Day 2022. My name is Candy Seriano and I blog at stampwithcandy.com and today I'm going to share uh, some childhood memories and a card that I made in honor of those childhood memories. Um, and when I'm done, I'm going to send it to my aunt because I know she'll really appreciate it. Um, she recently moved to the Ozarks and found a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and loves making cards, so she'll really be able to appreciate this one. Okay, so um, let me let me show you the card first, and then I'll probably blab a lot. So, um, but let's just switch over and look at the card, and let me make sure that's right centered there. Okay, so I grew up in a half Italian a family. My dad was Italian. My grandparents on his side were Italian. My great grandmother on that side spoke no English, and uh, um, she lived quite a long time. I, I was a, a sophomore in college when she died. So I had a good, you know, 20 years with her. And uh, she was she was really an interesting woman um, because she never really learned much English, but she, she adapted to living in America just fine with her children. And my grandparents bought this house on a block and uh, so did all his, my grandfather's siblings. And so grandma always, great grandma always had, or we called her little Noni, always had a place to stay because she could when one family said, oh, you know, I need a break, she'd just go down the street to, the, to another family's house. So um, that was a great childhood memory. But the one I really wanna share is one that um, had some more significance later in my life. So every Italian I know of my grandfather's generation who moved to America made wine. I don't know any who didn't make their own wine. And it was a thing and we called it Dago Red and now that would be considered a slur, but that's what we called it growing up. And so my, when I was engaged to my husband, my ex-husband at this point, um, he took me up to meet his grandfather and his grandfather comes out, you know, we're in the kitchen because you always sit at the kitchen table and he pulls out a jug of wine that just like this and he pulled out four glasses, juice glasses, because that's what you drank got out of. And he poured some in and then he just stared at me watching for my reaction. Well, guess what? I had no reaction because I've been drinking it since I was seven at my grandpa's house. So after I drank the first glass, he looked at my fiance and said, she's a keeper, you can marry her. And so we you know, went on to get married. Um, and, and then uh, what was interesting is that my mother's brother also married an Italian with the same story, except they had the benefit of the grandma made bread and it was the best bread in the world. And if I could have worked some, if I could have found some Stampin' Up bread that was current, I almost put some of the old paper pumpkin stuff on there, I would have. So anyway, this is my card. Um, and it's saying missing you because I really miss my grandparents. Um, all of my grandparents were really important in my life. They played a big part. We were always around both my mother's parents and my father's parents. And uh, they were just really, really important to me growing up. And so I do still miss them, even though they've been gone for a really, really long time, 20 years, some more than 20 years. Uh, my grandma's been gone 37. So, um, you know, well, I don't want to talk about that because I might get maudlin. So anyway, so my idea was I wanted a jug of wine and some glasses. Now, the jug of wine was so easy because, brewed for you, I saw that jug and I thought, we're good. I can just use that. And then I struggled with the glasses because I tried cutting off this part way, this little stamp part way, but then you had all this stuff on it and it didn't really look good. So, you know, being the Google expert I am, I Googled what, uh, juice glasses for wine and I found some and so I took a screenshot put it into a into some program where I could manipulate it and then cut them out all right so the couple things I want to show you about this card is first of all the layering so when I have something like this which you know isn't a stunning focal image I'm trying to tell a story here but it's not a really stunning focal image I need to do something else on the card to make it more interesting. And so what I chose to do is, oops, I need this piece of paper and if I, if I spill my, my water, will be in a, it'll be a mess. So what I chose to do, and I think you can see this uh, little thing, this little 
diagram I made is I chose to use a lot of layers because they give you a lot of interest in the card. And the kind of layering I like to do when I'm doing this is, uh, you know, the first layer is sort of the standard layer, five and a quarter by four. And then the next layer is a skinny layer. So it's three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. So there's, there's not much there, you know, instead of being, uh, you know, quarter inch, which means this is an eighth of an inch, it's a, it gets into the sixteenths of an inch. And then I like another bigger layer, I mean, bigger gap right here that's bigger than this to really set this image off. And so let me show you the, the layers and how they go together. So I have this layer, and then I have this layer. And I haven't done the base yet because there's a trick I want to show you with the base that I just learned from Bruno Bertucci in Australia, and I love it. So um, anyway, so you know, you got to put some adhesive on, and I have shaky hands, so I'm always messing things up. And so then I put it like this, and I went, you know, I kind of like that, but it's a little bit boring. So the first thing I did was I swapped this plain one out for this textured one. And I used the splatters and spots, um, what's it called? Stripes and splatters. <laughs> Stripes and splatters 3D embossing folders. And you can see right away I put that on and it just makes the car just look a little bit better, right? So I'm gonna pretend we're at the eye doctor number one or number two. And I definitely like number one better. It just adds something to your card. Okay, so I did that and I thought, well, that's nice, but you know what, I still wasn't there. And so then I thought I'm gonna swap this layer for this layer. And this layer, I think you can see it there, is the, the splatters. Again, it's not overpowering, but it just adds something to the card because I'm not like thrilled with the focal image. Now, like if I had some pretty flowers on there, I might not do that, but <laughs> um, for this, I really thought I needed, I, I, I totally needed to do this. Okay, so there's that. Um, so then the next thing I wanna show you is how is the card base, and hang on, I have to go. Get my trimmer, which is right behind me. You know, I don't know if you've watched my if you've watched my videos before. You know that my craft room is in my kitchen. I have a, a you know one of those kind of great room things where kitchen flows into the great room, and you know most people would. I do have a TV and I have a desk, but it's really my craft room. So anyway, the trick I learned from Bruno is is. When, when you have your, your, you know, your card base and it's scored and you go to fold it and sometimes, you know, it tries as hard as you can, it's just off by a little bit. And I don't know about you, but that drives me freaking crazy. So Bruno says that what you do is you put it here like this so that everything is square. Make sure that's on camera so that everything is square, right? So that all four corners, this side is butted up against there, this side is butted up against there, and then you use your bone folder. Help if I had one out to crease it. And then you get it perfect every time. And that was life-changing for me because I used to, I would actually, if it was off by a little bit and I couldn't fix it, I would just use that for layers or something because I want my cards to be, um, I want my cards to be nice and even. All right, so that's another tip for you. Now I have I have one one more tip and then I'm going to get to how I did the stamping. Put that over there. Well, actually, I have a couple more tips. Um, was, oh, the envelope. So if you follow my blog or if you've seen anything I've done, I always decorate my envelope and I always decorate the inside of the card. Now, 
you'll notice in the inside I have a double layer. And the reason I do that is because when you're coloring with blends, it bleeds through, and I don't want it bleeding through to the back of the card. That's the main reason. But the other reason is if I screw up while I'm coloring, I can just get another piece of paper and I haven't ruined my whole card. So I don't usually like to just do it on a bare card. I always want to layer on the inside. The other trick that I want to show you is the same thing when you're coloring in on the envelope. Find yourself a piece of scratch white paper or some, some paper. It doesn't have to be, you know, it can be already stamped on for, for, for all, you know, for it, it doesn't really matter. What you want is something between what you're coloring on the front of the envelope and the back of the envelope so that as you're coloring, this doesn't bleed through. So, um, so those are my tips about that. And then I have um, a couple more tips about actually stamping. So when I know I'm gonna stamp more than one, or I think, man, there's a chance that I won't be able to cut it out straight because of my eye issues, my lack of depth perception, this is how I do it. I cut out one of the images, which is, we're talking about these right now, the, 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 the jugs, on a fairly large piece of paper so that I have room to put the magnets and they don't get in the way and it doesn't pop up. Okay, and now, oops, when I want to stamp, I have a whole pile, for instance, I have a whole pile here of these uh, jugs, right? And this is especially good, this is why I'm sharing it, for Christmas cards where you're making multiples of the same, because you can get through this so quickly without, you know, without having to line things up. So yeah, I could stamp these and then I could get my die and I could go to my big uh, cut and boss machine and I could, you know, line it up, cut one, line it up, cut one. And then it slips and oops, now I ruined that one. And you know what I'm saying? So what I do is this. I just make a bunch of these. I, um, I put my stamp right here and then I pick it up. So like that, I pick it up. And then I put my blank in there, just like that. And then I ink it up. And there's a couple tricks, things that I do when I'm inking. And that is I like to use spots. You don't have to use spots, but I've been a paper pumpkin subscriber for a really long time. I have a lot of spots. And so what I do then is I just ink it up here because then I don't get that big mess. Now. The other thing I like to do when I'm inking it is I like to have something under there. Usually it's an ink pad, but sometimes it's an extra block. It just makes it a lot easier. And I see you're getting some shadows from my light. I'm sorry about that. But um, yeah, that's a little annoying. I should have probably fixed that. Um, I'm not sure I'm talented enough with the video editing to get that off. But anyway, you'll see. You'll get the idea. Um, and then... Now that that's there, I do this. So even with that, I made a mess. And then I found these cute little things in the dollar store. A dry erase eraser works too, and you can just rub it in there. Now, the reason I like this is I have, um, you know, I, I joke about my customers and their ages, but I have a, a lot of elderly customers, um, and, you know, keep in mind that I'm probably their age, um, who have arthritis, and they, and they struggle sometimes to, to get a good image. And so using the Stamparatus with this, it just makes it so much easier. And so I have a lot of extra plates because I can mark off on the grid paper where I want, where, the, where their paper goes, and then um, they can just switch out for the right stamp for the project they're doing. And I found that really helps with some of them. And, you know, it makes them feel like somebody cared now, the other good thing about a Stamparatus is if you look at this image, you can see right here, it's really not very good. So I would have to do it again. And I would ink it again. But we're not going to use this image because I'm not actually going to make a card in front of you. I'm just trying to talk about how I made my card and to give you some tips on making, um, just to help you with your card making, right? Okay, so then the other thing I wanted to talk about is the shading on this. 
And I learned this tip from Patty Bennett, who's a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And what she does is when she's done coloring with, um, with her blends, she'll take a watercolor pencil and not use any water, but just get over it a little bit because it gives it a little bit more depth than just the blends. And I found that my, you know, like I'll now look at an image and I'll go, wow, that's popping off the paper. And it's not because I'm such a great color, it's because I use this uh, watercolor pencil. And the shade doesn't have to match exactly. Like this is probably a, 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 a Rich Razzleberry watercolor pencil and this is Cherry Cobbler ink. But it still um, just really gives it some dimension, which I think is important. And then the last thing I wanted, oh, two more things. Um, so I, as I said earlier, I had trouble with the glasses. So what I did is I just went, you know, Google. I found a, uh, a juice glass and then I brought it into Canva and I, you know, resized it so it was the right size. And then I had to fussy cut them, but you know, those are pretty straight lines. So it was easy to fussy cut. The other thing I did is I, I did kind of a no line thing here in that I stamped this with the cherry cobbler and this I colored with the cherry cobbler. So there's not any uh, harsh black lines that you get sometimes when you stamp an image and um, when you stamp an image and then color it uh, because I wanted the wine. And I gotta tell you, that jug looks like it came from my grandpa's basement. He had this thing he called the fruit cellar was under the stairs and man, you went in there and there was all kinds of <laughs> jugs of wine um, plus my grandma's stuff. Now, the one last thing I wanna show you is I really wanted some bling up here and we don't have any mossy metal bling. Um, and, you know, so I go through all the bling I have and I think, I like those opal rounds because I wanted to do not like three of the same size. I wanted to do a little bit different. And so what I did is I took the opal rounds and again, with my mossy meadow blends, and I'm gonna tell you always use, oops, this one's dying. I gotta get a new one. Um, hang on. There we go. Um, yeah, I broke in the middle of doing this class or doing this card. But anyway, um, you always want to use this blunt tip, right? The bullet tip. You don't want to use your this the uh, brush tip because if you use the brush tip, you're going to wreck it. But you're not going to wreck this tip. And then all you do is just color, and then you get you can make them as dark or as light as you want, and it it just makes it coordinate just a little bit better. So I really hope. You enjoyed um, my, my class today, my little class, mini class, and I hope that all those hints or tips are good for you. Um, we, we're going to put together a tutorial, uh, everybody who is um, participating in this World Card Making Day of classes um, or videos is um, going, to put together, going to put a tutorial for how to make their card. And they'll be for sale and the money's gonna benefit I think Ronald McDonald House. So it's not, we're not getting the money from this. The demonstrators were donating it because uh, the crafty collaborations, we all really believe in helping each other and giving back. And uh, this is um, one way that we can give back to some people who are, you know, having a hard time because it's really hard when your kid is sick. It's really hard. Um, so thank you for stopping by and I hope you'll check me out on my blog, stampwithcandy.com. And if you watch this video, could you please subscribe? Then you can unsubscribe. But I only need like 10 more and I can have my own URL instead of the funky URL. So <laughs> I, I usually don't make a pitch for, hey, subscribe and like it. Because I figure people will do it if they want to. But I really just want those few more people so I can have my own URL. So thanks and have a great weekend. Bye.